Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news video. This time we're talking about Intel and their 10 nanometer delay that's been going on for ages now, along with new rumors about potentially soldered Intel CPUs for the 9000 series, talking about Samsung and their apparent development of a GPU coming up, AMD posting its best quarter in about seven years and more for this week's hardware news episode. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's HS70 wireless gaming headset, which focuses on comfort with memory foam, adjustable ear cups, and a padded headband. The headset has a 40-foot low latency range over wireless, lasts for up to 16 hours of gaming use, and has extra focus on build quality to ensure it lasts a long time. Learn more at the link in the description below. Very quick GN news first, we're still moving into an office. We we started the process. By the time this video goes up, we'll be mostly done. And uh, so, yeah, things will be changing significantly for the better coming up. Not significantly from your end, just from our end. Process will be fast. We'll be able to do more technical testing, all that. We'll have a moving vlog coming up for the whole process. Should be pretty fun. So keep an eye out for the moving vlog for our office move-in and setup. And uh, also, we have GN beer glasses on the store now. They're cobalt blue, 17 ounce with a gold trim on the rim of the glass, and those are listed on store.gamersnexus.net. We have some uh, some cool B-roll of them, if we can put that on the screen while I'm talking about it. So that's on the store. If you're interested in those, they're available in single or double packs, or you can obviously order more than that. So uh, first item, Intel delivering 10 nanometer systems by holiday 2019. Let me start this off by first saying we had a great question from someone about what's the deal with 10 nanometer somewhat recently. And so I spoke with David Cantor from Real World Tech about it. He's one of the leading technical analysts and uh, runs actually excellent forums as well on the technical side. So we spoke with him and if it's not already live when this video goes up, it will be shortly. We've got an interview basically just via phone talking with him for half an hour about Intel's 10 nanometer delays, what the deal is on a more technical level. We talk about EUV lithography, uh, multi-patterning and stuff like that and explaining why well, more appropriately, he explains why uh, one might be the cause of the delay for 10 nanometers. So, Intel's announcement then, their second quarter 2018 earnings had a, a record quarter for them, but there were a few caveats. And one of those was that the 10 nanometer class chips aren't expected until holiday of 2019. So that's official now. And this means that most realistically, those CPUs will be in mass production, sort of probably quarter two-ish of next year, 2019, with uh, system integrator availability towards the end of the year. It'd probably be about October uh, or November for the most part, most likely October though. So we're looking at that for the timeline for 10 nanometer. And Intel is going to continue relying on 14 nanometer until then. So one of those things they're relying on will be the eight core CPU coming up. It's basically confirmed at this point. Intel's own documents indicated it. And 14 nanometer has done well for Intel. They've managed to get something like 70% performance gains out of it from their first launch. But we'll see whether or not they, uh, they can keep pushing it and getting more out of it for long enough to compete. AMD has an aggressive roadmap where they've got 7 nanometer products expected. Now, a quick thing here. 7 nanometer versus 10 nanometer, one isn't better just because the number's smaller. It's a bit more complicated than that. It comes down to things like a density, for instance, and that's something we'll discuss in the David Cantor interview if you're curious about how that works and why one isn't just inherently better. There's a whole lot more behind it. So not long ago, Intel announced that it was shipping 10 nanometer in limited volume to select customers, including, we think, Lenovo, and that was likely to deflect skepticism about their MARD 10 nanometer process. So as it turns out, those shipments were limited to a few customers, including some customers in China, and the shipments were uh, largely dual car core parts with no IGP in them, so pretty limited usefulness. And Intel has continued to push 14 nanometers in the meantime. Uh, they are anticipating challenges with increased demand and supply for the existing setup, but the 10 nanometer delay is likely the cause for the increase in uh, supply and demand for 14 nanometer. So Intel insists that they're working with customers and fabs to address these issues, and we will see how it goes. They started, of course, the big statement by forcing the CEO uh, to resign. So that, that's kind of the start of that one. Intel 9000 series unlocked CPU is kind of detailed, again, for the thousandth time now via rumors. This one, this one's a rumor. Previous one was actual news from an earnings call. So the Chinese site, Kulaler, has listed supposed 
specs for the Intel 9000 series. We've seen these a few times now. Top 3K SKUs were included in that, including the upcoming Coffee Lake refresh. And the possible specs have been picked up by rumor sites. And uh, it's, it's still a rumor. So we've picked up some information for easy digestion. Let's just go through it and obviously grain of salt with all this part. So the rewarmed Coffee Lake will see a debut of the i9 branding in MSDT, Mainstream Desktop. And that's where the product stack is the 8-core 16-thread i9-9900K uh, Kin. So that's going to be at the top of the product stack. So let's go through some of the specs on the table for this. The 9900K is, again, the flagship, allegedly, 8-core 16-thread. There's probably some truth to some of these, at least core counts. We don't know about the frequencies. But this one is listed as a 3.6 gigahertz base, and boost is listed as 5.0. What that really means is single core and dual core 5.0 max boost with the eight core boost at 4.7. The 9700K is probably the most interesting. This one has eight cores, eight threads, will likely be a bit more affordable. Still 95 watt TDP and a single core to 4.9 with the rest of it following, obviously. 9600K is an i5, six core, six thread, and the rest follows in the same sort of progression as the previous two. So just to be clear, that was a rumor. Let's get into another one while we're at it. The 9900K and 9700K might use solder. Kind of hesitate to even include this one because we've heard this a million times before. We heard about the 8086K. Wasn't true. And uh, I don't know that it'll happen, but it's possible. So rumors on a, a German website suggest that Intel could move back to soldered IHSs for their 2K SKUs for the upcoming 9000 series CPUs. I will say this is something that Intel could use with their lack of major architectural changes until probably 10 nanometers. So if adding solder is something that they can do to at least make the product a bit more exciting than a refresh, we're all for it, of course. But either way, if it holds true, it would be the first time Intel's used solder since probably Sandy Bridge, which would be 2600K, 2500K, stuff like that. And at Golem.de, the source of this rumor, claims to have several Intel-related sources, allegedly, that have independently confirmed, as a quote, that Intel connects the metal lids to the processor via solder. So we'll see if that holds true. The move back to soldered heat spreaders would certainly be welcome, and we've long talked about solder versus uh, not doing it, and you don't need to delid and do liquid metal to use Intel parts. Let's make that very clear. You don't have to delid. You don't need solder. But it gives a lot more overclocking headroom. Obviously, things run cooler. They will run with lower power leakage as a result. It's about 4% power leakage for every 10 degrees Celsius. You change the temperature. So it would be a good change overall. Uh, it's not necessary in the strictest sense of the word, but it's something that we would very much like to see. Next one, we'll finish off these rumors before getting back into the actual news. So Samsung allegedly is working on its own GPU, likely for mobile devices. So it's fleshing out engineering teams to help bring their in-house GPU ambitions to fruition, apparently. The latest among those hired is Dr. Tianpin Liu. Liu is formerly of NVIDIA, MediaTek, and Intel fame, and will serve as vice president of Samsung's GPU IP development. Exactly what kind of GPU Samsung's working on is presently unknown. It's almost definitely mobile. There's really no reason they'd get into desktop. So mobile part makes sense. Apple has recently elected to start developing their own in-house silicon design, silicon component designs, and other rumors point towards Samsung designing a potentially gaming phone, which would compete with the one Asus just showed off, although they wouldn't be the biggest competition in the world for Samsung. So perhaps developing the future of their Galaxy phone around a custom GPU solution, but We'll keep an eye on it. We're not really mobile coverage, not that interested in it uh, as an outlet overall, but it's, it's worth looking at if someone's making a new GPU. Next one, AMD. This is, this, is for, this is a published earnings from AMD. So AMD posted their best quarter in seven years. AMD announced their financial results for second quarter of 2018, and quarter two ramps up AMD's already profitable year. Q2 marks the one-year anniversary of Zen, the Zen architecture, and a watershed moment for AMD, as it was both their return to competition and profitability, both of which they desperately needed, and so did the industry as a whole. Net revenue for the second quarter summed to $1.76 billion, with a net income of $116 million, AMD's highest net income per quarter in seven years. 
This is especially significant compared to just a year ago, where AMD suffered quarterly net losses of $42 million. Their $1.76 billion revenue marks a 53% year-over-year increase and a 7% increase over the previous quarter. So strong points for the quarter include Ryzen processors and Epic processors. Side note here, from what we understand, some of the enterprise and server customers are likely to begin picking up Epic in a much more accelerated fashion when the next generation of it launches. Because uh, some of the, actually one of our web hosts that we work with have had reservations about an AMD product that's brand new architecture, given AMD's been out of the game for a long time in server. So now that those reservations are getting addressed, it's likely that a lot of these companies, enterprise companies that had concerns about a brand new product might start buying into Epic for the next round of it. Radeon has had sales through largely mining, but some gaming sales as well. And AMD is currently working on seven nanometer products while eyeing five. Just keep in mind again that five versus seven versus 10, they're not linear comparisons, although it'd certainly be easy if they were. AMD is spending, by the way, about 25% more on its research and development than previously to continue its momentum and increase its ability to remain profitable as it gains a foothold in the CPU market. Next up, NZXT introduces Craft, or CRFT, and uh, if you look at that and think it's a monitor, actually it's not. So NZXT has announced a new service aimed at bringing limited edition hardware to gamers, basically stuff like PUBG cases. They've done things like CSGO cases in the past with different skins for Hyper Beast, for example. So they are aiming to continue that. The H700 PUBG limited edition is the first one, and it features, obviously, PUBG elements in it. So that case is up for 200 bucks, and the next item is to be announced in August. Additionally, 10% of the sales are going to the Gamers Outreach Charity. Finally, hardware sales for the week. EVGA is 1066 gigabyte at this time. Can be had for about MSRP. Which again, and I know this is getting old now, but is actually good considering the first six months of the year when they either weren't available or were atrociously expensive. So that's kind of MSRP now. There's an additional $20 gift card copy of Destiny 2 if you value those. Otherwise, you get the idea. So promo code NENGTX at checkout for $80 off list price at time of filming. Hopefully it's still there. 1080 and 1070 Ti prices have come down a bit. So those are, uh, they continue to be pretty decent, close to MSRP, about 450 bucks for the lower prices of the 1070 Ti's. We'll link a couple of these deals in the description below, as always. Last week, I think we had Threadripper was, it's still marked down, so Andy's got a lot of overstock of Threadripper. The sale will probably continue to go on ad infinitum at this point. Uh, they're just trying to clear stock before Threadripper 2 comes out, which is in not long, August 13th or so. So if you wanted Threadripper 1 and you don't care enough to wait for the second generation, like maybe it's just an enthusiast thing, it's not a bad price, but... Uh, that price may look bad depending on how good Threadripper 2 is. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye out on it. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up our new beer glass or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus helps out directly. We have one behind the scenes video on Patreon of the new office, but we're pushing an entire series of old office, new office for both sentimental and historical reasons as we move. So Subscribe to the channel to catch all that. It'll be right here on the main channel for everyone. So thank you for watching as always. I'll see you all next time.